Great, thank you. We'll get started. Um, welcome to the meeting this afternoon. I am Vince Tabella. To my left, Ms. Dalkey, Mr. Clement, Ms. Johnson, Ms. Allen, and Mr. Aikida. First item is to consider the consent agenda, and Mr. Aikida has agreed to read it for us in the record. Okay, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Ladies and gentlemen, uh, the consent agenda for planning and zoning May 20th, 2015 will be as follows. Uh, item 3B, uh, case number Z, 15-016 uh, in District 3, 2930 South Alma School Road, located south of Guadalupe Road on the west side of Alma School Road. Site plan review, this request will allow for the development of an automotive repair facility. Item 4. I'm sorry. On the staying order, we have the meeting minutes to start with. Okay. And then item 3A. Okay. I'm sorry. Do you want to start? Just let's follow the agenda in order. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Start with the uh, meeting minutes. And then uh, start with 3A and then continue from there. 2A. Okay. 2A, I'm sorry. So uh, we'll be... Uh... Uh, item 2A uh, for the minutes of April 14th, is that correct? Yes. 14th uh, study session regular hearing. Yeah, April 14th and April 15th study sessions and regular hearing. Okay, and then uh, we'll be discussing uh, 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 taking it, uh, we'll be discussing 5A, is that correct then? No, just um, we have the meeting minutes and then we'll start with Let's 3A as part of the consent agenda. Start with 3A, that's where you're at right now. Oh, okay, I'm sorry about that. Okay, they'll be taking action on the following items. Uh, item 3A, I believe, has been continued for next month. Uh, that's uh, 4418 East University Drive. Now we're on uh, item uh, 3B, which is uh, case number Z15-016, District 3, uh, 2930 South Alma School Road, located south of Guadalupe Road on the west side of Alma School Road. It's a site plan review. Uh, this request will allow for the development of an automotive repair facility. Uh, item 4A associated with uh, item 5A, which has to do with Harris Crossing 2. It's in District 1, 2305 North Harris Drive. The case number is Z15-015. Uh, it's located north of McKelts Road and west of Gilbert Road, approximately 4.8 acres. Rezoned from RS-43 to RS-35 PAD and site plan review. Uh, this request will allow for the development of a single residence subdivision. Item 4B, uh, case number Z15-014, uh, in District 6, 10950 East Elliott Road, located northeast on the northeast corner of Signal Butte Road and Elliott Road, approximately 108.45 acres. It's a site plan review. Uh, this request will allow for the expansion of an existing City of Mesa water treatment plant. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, those are the items on the consent agenda. Sorry for the mix-up. He included 5A as part of 4A. So, staff, are we clear? Okay. <laughs> Thank you, Steve. Is there a motion? I'd like to make a motion to approve the consent agenda as read, read into the record. Okay. Is there a second? A second. Please vote. <clears throat> motion passes with Ms. Hudson's absent today. If your case was on the consent agenda, you are free to leave. If you want to hang around for fun, you certainly can. Yeah. Let me reread it. Yeah. Mr. Chairman, there's a blue slip for the water treatment facility. All right. Just have to make things complicated. <laughs> um, we already read it into the... I think it's at this point you can, can have, make a motion for a reconsideration or here. I think it's your choice. Water treatment plant. Are they in opposition? 
Yes. It would be that you go ahead and allow the, the comment, and then after the comments, the board would have the option to reconsider the case and reopen the case for a new vote, or choose, should you choose to do that. Okay. What item is that? Or is it okay. All right. Uh, so, all oh, four B. He says he does not wish to speak, so he just read it into the record. Right. All right, so we do have a blue card on the case that we've already, was already on the consent agenda, read into the record. Um, we're going to go ahead and hear, hear what the citizen has to say about it, and then we can uh, reconsider or take action thereafter. So we do have uh, Mr. John Cooper and Smith. I get that correct. If you'd like to come to the, to the podium and uh, state your name and address for the record, and if I botched up your name i apologize you did a good job um i'm john cooper schmidt and i live out there uh to the east of the subdivision the industrial site we're developing and one of the questions a couple of things came up i'm with meridian point hoa and uh, we have a question on the pumps we're going to upsize the pumping on this what type of uh screen walls are we going to put in for the noise we're going to make the horsepower probably a third larger than it already is for the pumping and stuff, so we're concerned about that. And next thing is, is Meridian Point, when they built that for the whole area, the sewer for that area was designed with a 12 inch line, and we don't get enough flow. So when we do the water plant, we would like to get the water, I don't know if they're doing this, if the waste is going from the sewer plant over and pick up with the manholes, which runs up uh, um, Emory Street. Emory Street is your lineup, and it goes to the north to the power lines. Anyway, the city has a 12-inch line through there, and we have an odor problem there, and we need to flow through that. So we want to make sure this is being considered two of the items. That's the big, big items right now. So if this goes through and we're all done, the citizens can't bring anything up anymore, can they? Is that true? Um, it will go to city council for final final adoption, but uh, we'll, um, is that all you have to say for, for yes, this case? Yes, that, okay. that's the big thing right now. Okay, staff. Um, would you like to, to, can we address his concerns or provide some additional information or? Mr. Chairman, member of the board, I would request the applicant uh, project manager, Chris Scott, to, if he can address that. Uh, Chairman Abello, members of the board, thank you. I'm Chris Scott um, with the City of Mesa Engineering Department. This is Lisa Jackson with Black and Beach. Um, Black and Beach is our design engineer. Um, so I guess starting with the pumps, um, I'll, I'll have Lisa describe it because she knows the horsepower is off the top of her head. But we are adding some pumps to the existing uh, pump station out there. Uh, are we increasing also, though? I didn't think. No, we're just not adding. Increasing well, here, come. There are already existing pumps at the pump station, and we're adding uh, three new pumps for the Falcon Field distribution system. Uh, Two, two, and then plus one standby, and those horsepowers will be 250. Okay. Are those pumps inside of an enclosure or building, or can you describe? Uh... Cur currently, no. The pumps are um, on top of a wet well, and it has some screening from the on the north side because there is an existing effluent building on the north side, and then on the south side there is an influent building between the two and then on the east side of that is an electrical building. And then we'll be building another building um, in line with the electrical building so it'll complete kind of the screen for the east side. Okay. And the other item, the other question he had is related to uh, oh, about, sewer about size the sewer. and water. <clears throat> Currently we're planning, because of the way the site's set up and the, the way the gravity flow from the sewer works, we have it set up flowing west to Signal Butte. I haven't looked specifically at getting all the way over to the east in that sewer. Um, my guess is there's probably not going to be able to make the grades work, but I will definitely take a look at that. Okay. Um, just to recap the project real quickly, I mean, Mr. Cooper Smith, you understand that the Sewer treatment or the sewer treatment plant, the water treatment yeah. plant is eventually going to be surrounded by a, a future park and landscape area. And, and the size of the the constraints of the site are not really expanding per se. Um, so what's there is is 
going to remain and it's going to get enhanced in the future. Is that a fair, fair mm -hmm. recap of what's happening? Yes, Mr. Chairman, uh, because already the uh, water treatment plant is inside uh, eight feet wall, CME wall high. So all the expansions that are happening and proposing, they're all within that existing eight foot high CME wall. Um, any, any other questions or comments from, from the board? Um, I think we read into the record as, as approval with whatever the conditions are. Do we, do, do we feel do we need to change that or? I don't think, it's not going to change my vote. Uh, I don't know if it's going to affect anybody else's, but I, I'll just, from my record, it's not going to change my vote. Okay. Consent or not. We, can we leave it as, as read in the record or do we have to take another motion on it for approval? Okay, so Mr. Coopersmith, I, I would just suggest that um, it is a city facility, city property. Um, if it does become an issue in the, in the future, um, you always have recourse, um, regardless of whether um, as, it, as it moves through the system, through city council. Um, I think the city is pretty uh, sensitive to surrounding areas and, and what's happening there. So I think they address the, the noise from the pumps and the sewer. Um, issue, not really an issue, but the sewer concern, uh, this board isn't going to change the recommendation for approval. That's yeah, right. And, and I'm for it. The area is for it. We're just trying to make sure items are being covered now instead of five years ago, like at the Brown Road, we had to come in and put big walls around the pump station and stuff like that. Okay. It'd be easier to put it in now, design it in now, and get it into the scope of this uh, project. Well, if there's a concern, can you, can they now, can they, can he bring it up in council? Because it has to go through a, a city council. So if you're not comfortable with what you find out here, I believe you can go to city council and then bring up that issue there. Instead of working that way, I'd rather work with uh, Chris Scott on this. Instead well, that's what I mean. I, I'm saying that if, if you can work with him and then if you still have concerns, I believe this item still goes up to city council. Right. And you can bring it up again and then they have to vote because they have the final uh, say. We don't really have the final say here. We have to make approvals. But the city council, I think, makes the final approval on, on, this, on this issue. So you can still do that, I believe. Can I ask one other item? On, on Elliott Road, are we going to fix Elliott Road? Yes. Um, the, as part of the construction of the treatment plant, we'll be widening Elliott Road uh, all along the north side from Mountain down to uh, Signal Butte. Okay, because we asked for a sidewalk last time, just an asphalt sidewalk, and that got fell through, okay. and now we're doing a, the build-out of the plant. See, that's why it's important yeah. to get this in right. now. This is build-out of the plant. So as I said, I have concerns wherever I can work with Chris on this, yep. and he can work with Black and Beach and a few other items we might have. Great. Thank you, Mr. Okay. Scott, your man. <laughs> Thanks. Okay. Back on track here. Item 6A on the agenda. Um, case Z15-012, District 1, 809 North Dobson Road. South Loop 202 East of Dobson Cider Road, East Side of Dobson Road, Site Plan Review and Special Use Permit for the development of a gas station. Um, this has been uh, addressed to the board last time. Um, we do have a couple of, of cards here that um, from citizens that do not wish to speak. I'd like just to read those into the record first, and then we can hear from staff and then the applicant as needed. Um, first item was from Mesa Grande Community Alliance. Um, they um, they are in favor of the recommendation of continuance for the project. They do not wish to speak. Ms. Tanya Collins is representing Mesa Grande Community Alliance. And then uh, a W. Montague, again, for Mesa Community Alliance. And um, they marked it as opposed, but the understanding there is they're in favor of the recommendation for continuance. And you do wish to speak. Is, is Mr. Montague here? Yes. State your name and, and for the record and address. My name is D. Montague. I live at 553 North Orange Street and I'm a member of the steering committee for Mesa Community, uh, Mesa Grande Community Alliance. We've reviewed and submitted comments uh, of, of our ideas. We think that the design needs to be improved. The walkways need to be widened. 
there's been concern expressed about the blowers, the drying area of the, of the car wash being right next to a, a restaurant with an outdoor patio, uh, with it being right directly across the street from Riverview Park. It ought to have as nice of a accommodations as possible to fit in. So, you know, we've, as a community, spent a lot of time and effort in making this a signature gateway. And, and although car washes play an important role in our, in our economy, we don't necessarily have them as gateways. Now, I speak as a son-in-law of a man who owned a car wash, Sherwood Car Wash, on, on East Main Street for many, many years, still owns that property. And, and it's noisy. And when it's busy, the traffic is, is uh, bad coming in and out. And as cars go uh, out to, to enter the streets, uh, there's uh, hazards and, and pedestrian hazards. Uh, one of the proposals that we had made uh, to the staff would be to re require that there be wider sidewalks, uh, uh, some shielding, some making sure that there's not a noise that there's noise barriers uh, to not drive a neighbor restaurant with an outdoor patio uh, out of business, make it uh, hard for their lunchtime uh, diners to, to be there. So those are the main, the main concerns. I, uh, I, th I thought that uh, I can, if I can see clear enough to read, one of the things was we expect big crowds along there, so a simple five-foot sidewalk, side five foot wide sidewalk on Riverview Drive and a five foot landscape buffers too narrow. Uh, typically uh, one lane, uh, and then when they come out of the wash and make their turns, it seems to be quite narrow. And they, uh, they're they trying to get a lot of things on that property that uh, make it so that it's not compatible with being a signature piece. So yes, we'd like to continue it and have them do more work on the design and, if they can, I understand that there has been a request to them to make some changes that were refused. And if, if it continues to refuse, then as a, an organization with the, the Mesa Grande Community Alliance, we would oppose the, the project. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, staff, would you like to get just a real brief overview and then we'll hear from the applicant, assuming the applicant wants to present today? Chairman, member of the board, um, as you are aware, this case was last time uh, the applicant made a presentation and on my uh, one-page one memo, staff memo, we identified that we appreciate that uh, the applicant has made some changes, uh, eliminated some parking uh, from the entrance and removed the or moved the trash enclosure. Uh, connected the sidewalk better. So all those are good, but still our main issue with the applicant was that we want them to make this project a little bit unique. We all know it's next to the River Park. City uh, and the community has spent uh, so much of money and investment on that. So, I mean, staff doesn't have an issue with the use as a car wash uh, I mean, and the convenience store, but we want the uh, applicant to consider the reorientation of the building and the materials uh, a little bit improved and signature project at this corner. Thank you. Okay. Any questions of staff at this point? I understand the applicant would like to make a presentation. If, um, if you just focus in on anything new or, or different that you want to present to the board, that'd be very much appreciated. Absolutely. Jesse Massey, SPM Design Group. 1425 North 1st Street. Um, thank you again for the opportunity to be here in front of you again. If I may, I probably should have done this. hard for me to <laughs> Yeah, I put it over here. 
here, so I think. Okay, so um, I will actually just uh, focus on some of the changes since the last time that we were here um, uh, just about a month ago, um, I believe back, back on the 15th. Um, just to give you a, an, an overview, um, since the last time we were in front of you on the on the Wednesday the 15th, we actually... We were actually supposed to have our design review work session the day before, the, the 14th, and I actually got um, postponed because of uh, it did not have a quorum. So we ended up having our design, rev uh, design review work session on Thursday the 16th, right after our planning commission. So if I may, I may just focus on some of the, some of the components and some of the items that uh, were discussed. And um, if I may present um, the meeting minutes from the work session. Uh, be and again, I feel that's important because it was specifically discussed um, regarding the site plan and the elevations des design. So we had specifically discussions on, on both items with the design review board members. So if I may um, uh, hand these over to, to, to you also, you could follow that as well. That'd be it. So again, I'll, I'll quickly put in here regarding the, the, some of the items that, that were discussed actually um, not only at the planning commission um, a month ago, some of the suggestions that we actually had come up with at, during, the, during the, 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 the hearing, as well as some of the suggestions that were done at the uh, design review work um, session. <clears throat> so um, if you recall... And, and through the chair, I can't remember the the um, uh, the commissioner that actually had made a mention regarding some possibility of additional landscape buffer along Dobson. So one of the one of the items that was also reiterated reiterated in um, in our design review work session was um, additional landscape buffer. So one of the items that we actually did was. Um, Increase the landscape um, setback along Dobson an additional 10 feet. So we actually shifted the buildings and the site essentially easterly to give us an additional 10 feet of buffer. Um, there in that location, we only have a requirement of 15 feet, um, and we actually end up with uh, 30 feet there. Um, as part of our shifting of the um, of the building, obviously, we, we increased the buffer, so it gave us an opportunity to increase the number of trees, the number of, 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 of shrubs. Uh, it also gave us the opportunity to shift the access off of Mesa Riverview, which actually there was, uh, I think, some concern about the proximity to the corner. So this actually shifted the drive an, an additional 10 feet farther east, um, and then we also looked at the possibility of, okay, how, how can we enhance that pork chop? If you recall, that was one of the requirements that early on with staff, they were concerned about for, full circulation on that curb cut. So one of the components that we had in, introduced was the pork chop, which limited the left in, left out. So I know that there was some concern about it being sort of puny at the time. So what we actually did was increase the width of the, um, of the pork chop. We're incorporating a, a paved 
paver design on that. Uh, and, and it actually shortened up the pedestrian path. Um, the other, the other item that was discussed at the work session, and I believe it was planning commission as well, but nonetheless, uh, there was discussion about possibility adding some colored concrete on the site plan that incorporated that that kind of connected the landscape buffer to the C store. So if you see. And it's hard to see, I, I understand, but um, it basically connects the, the, the um, we, we selected a charcoal uh, gray concrete. Um, we looked at other possible variations with a more of a, a, a sand color. Um, we were just a little bit concerned about the uh, scuff marks, if you will, and, 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 and in time. So we actually selected a, a charcoal gray that actually connects the, um, the landscape buffer to the, to the building. Um, just quickly, uh, we, these are some of the changes we actually did in addition to some of the, the additions that we had agreed with staff, which was to remove the parking spaces adjacent to the patio, shift the refuse enclosure, uh, narrow the car wash opening as well as narrow the rear access opening. Um, we had extensive conversation with design review work session. The staff made the rec made their ma made their introduction to design review. Um, basically, mimics the um, the recommendation that we see tonight, which which is the alternate layout. So there was there was ample discussion with the design review board members, and we left there we left there with. Um, Unanimous that the design review board members did not agree with staff on on an alternate layout. Um, there was there was actual comments um, from uh, board member um, Thompson um, that said that you 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 can't you can't. Um, rotate a, a gas station. It just doesn't work from a business standpoint. And at the end of the meeting, it was basically concluded that, yeah, this is a great layout. Um, they've done so much with the pedestrian and the patio. And, and basically, on the regarding the site plan, we had a full um, approval from the design review board member with the site plan layout that you have here. Um, regarding the building design, <laughs> Um, again, we, uh, I know we've, we've basically agreed to disagree with staff in the fact that we feel that we have a, a, a very high end quality design here. We have sustainable materials. This is not your typical gas station by any means. We've done so much more in, in, in our opinion. Um, so again, just to quickly, uh, some of the items that were discussed at the, at the uh, design review work session. I know staff, one of the recommendations or what has come on the staff report is, is uh, regarding the fuel canopy and, and trying to really enhance that canopy. And, and again, um, it's, it's not because of finances or that we don't want to um, spend the money, which I, I'm hoping that you agree is that We've, this is not your typical gas station design on the site and the amenities. Uh, it's not a financial part. It's the fact that uh, the canopy, in, in, in our opinion, is uh, minimalistic. You don't want to add a lot to that canopy because it's going to get tired. It's, it's, it's really going to bring focus to a canopy that really wants to disappear. And after, again, after some discussion with Design Review Board, um, they, they also agreed with, with, with me and did not agree with staff that it really the, the, the canopy should be uh, just left alone and being um, minimal as possible. On the, on the building, um, there was some discussion regarding the variations of, of the parapet heights. And I know staff was recommending that the parapet heights 
get raised the entire um, height and that we get rid of some of the variations in depth. And again, design review board members did not agree with that. They actually liked the variations. So one of the things that we came out of that meeting is the concession is that we would split the difference between the two. So what we did was we actually raised the, 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 the overall parapet height half the distance and then just narrow, narrowed the gap between the two. There was also discussion about uh, bringing in a, a brick uh, finish from some of the adjacent retailers and, and, and uh, shops. So we went out there and, 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 and had different uh, options, and we actually selected a very nice uh, brick finish that we incorporated into all the piers that you see. So that's the difference between the, between the two that you see, um, which before it was stone. And um, so now on all the piers that you see here, we actually have a brick finish. So again, further tying everything together. And again, we have no opposition with that. Um, again, the, the side finishes, as you see, everything, everything is, uh, the difference is again, bringing in the brick finish. Um, again, the canopy is as minimalistic as possible. And again, um, just want to reiterate the design review board um, agreed with us. Uh, car wash, same thing. We brought in the, the, the finish of the brick. Uh, the pedestrian, <clears throat> again, um, one of the items that originally we had incorporated a pedestrian plaza at the very corner uh, on the interior side of our property. One of the items that staff had recommended was well, we like it, but we really would like to have it on the exterior side, on the outside, so that it can get used um, much more. And we had no objections to that, which is what you see. Um, so it was used to be on the interior. We made it on the exterior. Um, again, our patio area, uh, very lush, hardscape, landscape. We have a, a metal trellis that complements the, the existing one that's there by, I believe, the Harkins, or the Cinemark, I apologize. Um, and as you see here, this is the difference between the old pork chop and, and, and the new pork chop. So you can see that it actually shortened up the path and we, we, we enlarged the pork chop. Um, so one of the, one of the, just to give you a, a little bit of a perspective of the landscape versus the hardscape, um, for this site compared to the other projects that we've done in, in the valley. Um, this one in particular, we have 41% that is hardscape or landscape to the entire site. So, uh, uh, and I appreciate the neighbor's comments. Um, <clears throat> and I believe that their comment was that we didn't have enough landscape, et cetera. Um, and, and I just wanted to give you this data because we're almost, ha we're almost half of, a, of our project in area size in landscape and hardscape. Just to give you a perspective, uh, uh, the corner store that we just built in Phoenix, which actually, which actually required 30-foot landscape buffers along the street, still only had 25%. Uh, the corner store in Gilbert, which they actually require 50% landscape setbacks along two arterials, still only had 31%. Um, in Tolleson, 21, and in Buckeye, 26%. So again, I just wanted to, this, this is just quick data here to give you a perspective of, of uh, this here in Riverview is not going to be like in no other ones that we've done as far as the, the, the landscape um, and the hardscape. Again, just uh, I think we talked about a little bit uh, but I just wanted to touch base with is, the, and, and I believe Dan Lupin from from Kimco, who couldn't be here today, uh, just to reiterate his um, his presentation <clears throat> from last um, last month. This pad has been vacant for seven years now. Um, there's nobody nobody behind us uh, jumping at the opportunity to be here in this pad. Uh, the shops that are there, there currently is no restaurants. There's, there's, I believe there's a, a yoga place and and um, and I believe one more tenant. But these va these shops have been vacant about 85 percent, maybe 90 percent vacants. And, and and just to reiterate, the presentation from Dan Lupin is, 
he's having a very hard time leasing out these shops in here because uh, the fact of the matter is that they see this vacant pad that's right adjacent to the shops, and, and it just it, it does impact him in a, in a negative way. Um, Mr. Macias, you have yes, sir. To wrap it up. We'll... Uh, yes, sir. Um, again, I just want to make sure. Um, I, I want to make sure that um, you know there's a lot of there's a lot of um, comments regarding the alternate layout, and I want to reiterate the the fact that we have substantial and 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 and, and facts regarding the crime prevention design guidelines that clearly uh, denote that uh, doing a backward layout or a side layout just does not work from a surveillance. And, and, and it's just a standard practice that even city of Chandler um, um, actually remove that from their from their requirements. They do not no longer require a gas station to be uh, designed in a backward layout. Um, I normally don't do this, but I just wanted to give you a quick update on the, on the project that we had in Gilbert last week. This is a very quick er excerpt from the staff report report from design review from Gilbert. And they specifically had on there the SEPTED, the crime, the crime Prevention Through Environmental Design. And they had the recommendation to the Design Review Board is that staff was against doing anything other than your standard layout because of the SEPTED. <clears throat> so again, I just wanted to point out here is the fact that other cities um, do not support an alternate layout. And they, not, not only from a business standpoint, um, but from a from a security standpoint, um, and again, in closing, I just want to I just want to reiterate that this is you know again I don't we we don't agree with staff is the fact that we haven't done enough that uh, that this is your typical station by any means, and I'm hoping that that you all can see that this is not by any means your typical design, uh, not only from a building design, from a, but from a site plan standpoint. Um, we want to be part of the community. I think this is a, this is a use that 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 we need here. Uh, you know, CST has their offices here in Mesa. They're part of the community. Um, so I would just hate to lose an opportunity to have a premier retailer here at this corner. Um, I just don't feel that staff their staff report hasn't changed one bit from the very beginning. And I respect staff, I've worked with staff before, but, but I don't feel that they've given us factual supports uh, of why an alternate layout works better than, than, than our layout. We've given them factual reasons from the SEPTED and the business standpoint that it doesn't work. Um, so with that said. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Any questions from the board members? No questions. Okay, so uh, I guess I have one. This is, you know, it's recommendations for continuance. Um, Mr. Macias, are, are, are you, have you taken as far as you possibly can from your perspective in terms of site plan design and layout? Uh, really the premise of the question is continuing it for another month does what exactly um, in terms of moving the needle closer to the middle in terms of what the re staff report says and what you've done so far? Um, do you, is there any any value in continuing it, um, Chairman Debella? Um, from our standpoint, uh, continuance for another month only del delays, I think, the inevitable because or the decision because if 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 the staff is not willing to um, shift on their recommendation, um, I just don't see how continuance would 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 help us. Uh, we really feel, we really wish that staff was behind us and really recognized that this was an excellent project and an opportunity to fill a, a void and fill a vacant pad. Uh, but if they just do not want to shift from their position and, and do an alternate layout, um, I don't think a continuance would, would make any difference. Okay. All right, thank you. So, board members, Shelly. I do have a comment to make, and, and mine is... Um, if, if, we're, if we're voting on this today, um, I won't be supporting this project, and not because I don't believe that the use is a good use, because I do believe it is. 
I just feel like that as from a design standpoint, I feel like that corner is too prominent. I think I've said that before, that the city has invested way too much in, in what is across the street. And I believe that this really um, doesn't stand up to that. I, I understand. I appreciate your, your willingness to add different materials, to add different landscaping and all those things. I just think that the design of the of overall site design could be better. Just so from my perspective, I couldn't support the, the project as it is. Any other comments? Yeah. Also, I wanted to mention that I actually went out to the Higley and Pecos um, unit, and I saw all the canopies there at the street, and I could never support that at Riverview at that location on the west side of Dobson. Could not do it. Okay. Any other any other comments? So our our choices, we, we can you know continue it as recommended, and mm -hmm. um, see it again next month for or and he made they made have may decide to pull the project, I suppose. Um, or we can uh, approve or deny. Um, those are our three options. Um, yeah, I was just going to make a comment. Yeah. It sounds to me that basically we've got the city very adamant in a position. We've got the applicant very adamant in a position. So they're really forcing us to make a decision. It looks sounds like they're ready just to move on if 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 there is no um, consideration or actually adaptation because there is no middle of the road. It's either one or the other. And I'm really getting, and I was looking, thinking about the comments of, of Mr. Montague about some sidewalks and things. I don't really think that's the issue at hand. It really, to me, is coming back to the orientation. Um, from a business standpoint, I, I tend to side with the applicant because they know what works for them. On the other side, you know, we're out for the aesthetics of the project in the area, and, and a lot has been invested, so it's a tough call. I think there's merit personally on both sides of this. I wish there were, maybe we go halfway between and just tweak it a little bit. I don't know. But I, I do believe it would be a good use. It is an attractive station for what it is and what you're doing. I want you to know that as a board member that I support too, in terms of the quality. But there seems to be a pretty insurmountable issue here in terms of the orientation. And, you know, I think it's going to come back. I would think the applicant would have to see how strong the city is because of the investment they've made. The project will work even with an adaptation of that orientation. So, okay, that's my thought. So whether it's approval or, or denial, it still goes to city council, um, ultimately. Um, staff, do you want to outline actually, kind of the steps? Actually, approvals of the site plan stop at the PNZ board. Okay. They could, the applicant could uh, appeal a denial to the city council, um, but the decision you're making tonight would be the decision on the site plan. Okay. All right. Board members, would someone like to make a show? Just one question for clarification. Then, so the special use permit, though, would that would move forward to council, or does that stay here with us as well? The special use permit is also a decision here. It is, um, okay. Yeah. Yeah. It, it is, yes. No. The confusion is typically special use permits are decided by the Board of Adjustment. And those appeals go to court. So the question is if they appeal the special use permit, where would that go? My recommendation is if the board decides to uh, deny the site plan, that that motion would include a uh, continuance as well for the special use permit and have the special use permit come back as a separate consideration item after the city council decides on the appeal of the site plan. I know that, well, no, I'm not, I'm not that. We've already made the staff recommendation on that. What I'm, I'm trying to advise you is on uh, a possible motion. If you, I mean, the, the one possible motion is to approve the case with a list of conditions, as the applicant would like you to do. The second option would be to deny the site plan. But because this is a two-part case, there's two items, two action items that you're site deciding. Site plan and the special use permit you're talking correct. about, is that correct? Right. What I would ask you to do is that if the, the motion that gets seconded it for, um, 
for the site plan is to deny it, then part of that motion would be to continue the special use permit. And the advantage to that is that we hold the special use permit in abeyance until you get direction from the city council on the site plan. If the council decides to, for example, uh, if, they, if you decide to recommend denial and the council overturns your decision and decides to approve the site plan, then the case would come back and the board could vote on the special use permit. If the council decides to, if you decide to recommend denial of the site plan and the city council upholds your denial, then the applicant would just withdraw the case and it would go away. But we would at least leave the special use permit active so the board could act upon that at some time in the future. And Gordon, that's if they choose to appeal the decision. Correct. Any other questions? I have a question. So then if, if we vote and choose not to approve the site plan, the applicant still has an opportunity to come back with an alternative site plan. So Correct. this thing can stay alive. Yes. It basically is just going to send a message that, you know, best if that's what we choose to do. Right. Um, give it yeah, I mean, time. right now, the, the... It's not the, necessarily I, killing the deal, and I think that's my, my comment. Yeah, this isn't over yet. It's just basically we're taking a position. Right. You're, you're, the, you're deciding on the site plan. You have the authority to do that. And the site the can applicant, be if the applicant disagree, if you decide to deny the site plan, and the applicant disagrees with you and decides to appeal that, that appeal would be heard by city council. Or they could come back with an alternative site plan. Uh, we would have to re-advertise that, and, would and you really? right, I see. that would be that would have to come as a separate case. Okay, thank you for that clarification. Hey, um, just I guess one question for Mr. Macias. Um, you know, continual. Perpetual continuance doesn't serve, doesn't seem to serve any purpose um, from your perspective or, or from the board's perspective. Um, do you have a, other than wanting it approved, if, if, do you understand what happens if a motion is declared for denial, what your steps would be from there? Through the chair, Chairman. Um, I guess if I understand correctly, if I understand Gordon, um, if we do get a denial, it's kind of a two part. We would then appeal it to city council, but then city council would only hear the site plan, and then the SUP would then go through the zoning administrator. Through this board, not the ZA, just, uh, okay. Well, obviously it's, uh, it's unfortunate, um, but I, I again, um, and I have my client here, I, I just don't, I don't see at this point that we would be able to come to a middle ground. Uh, we, we feel that we have a very solid project here and um, um, okay. well, it's, um, well, recommendations for continuance. Um, certainly a motion can be carried out in that regard um, or whatever. Well, the, I'm not too sure if uh, continuance is going to do any good because I think what Mr. Macias is saying is that uh, uh, they're not. They're not going to be changing their site plan. So I don't. What's the point? Uh, be after this conversation, hearing the sentiment of the board, it could also give the applicant something to consider. There may be some coming around that has yet to be explored. The objective is to move from their positions if there is a place to go. Well, I understand that, but it sounds like there isn't going to be one. Am I getting that? Am I correct on that, or am I missing it, or, or what? It's certainly your opinion to deduce that. I'm uh, <laughs> okay. just laying out all the options here so we can move forward one way or the other. So if uh, there is any further discussion, if someone would like to make a motion, we'll see what happens. Can I ask one more question. Uh, Mr. Messinius, is there any um, opportunity, I mean, I don't know if you had a chance to visit with your client, but would you, uh, and I guess just your preference, would you prefer that we make, an, we do, uh, make a recommendation right now or, or an action right now or to continue it? I'm just asking your, just figured I'd put it out there. That's the applicant. I mean, yeah. it's really not. I'm just asking his opinion. Yeah. I would love an approval from you all today, tonight. Right. <laughs> um, I, I guess that's a tough question. That's a, I guess that's a question that we, we pose to staff if, if, um, 
if if there's any middle ground and and and, and again from a design standpoint um, I don't know that we can do much more but but we're certainly willing to do through work with staff on the design of the building if there's certain things that they're looking for that we can certainly enhance it um, but, but not the site plan. Okay. Thank you. Okay. I, will make a, <laughs> I will make a motion on case Z1512 to deny the site plan approval, however, to continue the special use permit request to, to continue to June 17, 2015. I second that motion. Okay. Motion on second. Uh, please vote. Uh, motion carries. Not right? Sorry. It's June 17th, not enough time? No, I don't think it would get to council by then. We'd probably have to continue it. Continue to, it to a future time? I would continue it to the July PNZ meeting, whatever that date is. I amend that to continue it to the July? Uh, whatever, I'm sorry. I... What is the next appropriate meeting? July. August, right? Our, what are, have we? Are, is there currently scheduled a PNZ meeting in July? Yes. To the, the July date? Planning and Zoning Board meeting as Which scheduled. Is, July fifteenth. July fifteenth. Can you re-second it? I, re I second my, that the, change. Do we have to re-vote? Why not? Yes. yes. Okay. Please vote. Keep it clean. You didn't vote. I did. Just didn't hit it. Mm -hmm. okay. <laughs> Our motion carries with the one uh, Ms. Hudson absent. Okay, any other items of business? Thank you. Anything else? Okay, meeting's adjourned. Is there a motion? <laughs>